Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Memorial Day Happy celebration. Memorial Tomorrow's Day. Memorial Day, but uh, that's okay. Um, Start the video, honey. Start the video. That video. 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 I did. I did. <laughs> um, Memorial Day actually uh, was started uh, in remembrance of the um, Civil War. You know, in the four years that there was a Civil War, six, 600,000 people, soldiers died from this war. And uh, a couple years after that, um, they, uh, they started a celebration, it was called Decoration Day. And it was on May 30th. And the reason it uh, started right then was that's simply the time that all the flowers were blooming. So they called it Decoration Day and use, use it from there. Uh, even as, uh, and that was 1868, 1869, there was an article in the uh, New York Herald, uh, New York Times, excuse me, that was condemning it because it had gotten too commercialized. <laughs> even a year after it started. <laughs> Uh, so it actually in 1918, uh, when Armistice Day started, later it became Veterans Day, and of course that was because of World War I. Uh, it, it was Veterans Day in 1954, and then in 1971, to stop all the dang confusion that everyone was having, they started Memorial Day. Uh, so that's how it all got started. So I know we've got a lot of veterans in the audience, and uh, you know I would, li I would really like it if they could stand up. Well, I'm not sure I can say anything. <laughs> is, uh, stand up. Your name. What rank? Well, who cares about the rank? What service? And anything you want to add? Give him a microphone. <laughs> sure, I can do that. Yeah. I don't have a drum. Daryl Morrison, I was in the Navy from 71, 75. Um, I was stationed on the USS Keyhawk. Um, I was an aircraft mechanic for the DAP 136 from Whidbey Island, Washington, which is uh, why I came to Washington. Uh, I was born and raised in Kansas, and I was going to come back and went to Puerto Rico. That's why I stayed here. Um, you know, I, I, you know, in a lot of ways, I did a lot of growing up when I was in there, and I got to see like three fourths of the world. So, uh, the government's paycheck. So. And I think you, I heard you had hitchhiked. Hitchhiked. Um, oh, yeah, when I got out. Yeah. When I got out of service, they wanted me to write, I was overseas, they wanted me to write the ship back. I said, no way, you're flying me in here. <laughs> so I, they wanted to fly me back to San Diego, and I said, no, what, can I get out of Seattle? You know, because I uh, can't remember any of the place now in Seattle. Anyway, um, so they flew me into Seattle, and I thought, you know what, I have no place to go, so I hitchhiked from Seattle to home. Um, I even hunkered down in some, uh, in Grandview, I hunkered down in uh, some, uh, in some rounds and barrels, you know, because it was late at night, it was cold. Anyway, a police officer came, and uh, <laughs> he came by, and he was talking to somebody, and I walked over, and I knocked on the window, and I said, hey, so I'm on my way home, can I sleep in your jail for the night? So they let me sleep in the jail for the night. Woke me up the next morning, gave me a cup of coffee, and then I just like, yeah, that will happen today, right? Yeah. Chances of that happen. Yeah. Who else? You. 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 Oh, come on. There can't be just two, two vets over there in the audience today. Yeah. Yes, they can. Hi, huh? Kelly and Yellow are on my phone. Don't forget them. Okay. They did. They do. <laughs> Dad and her yeah. yeah. Go. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, Phil, I was uh, in the Air Force and then in the Air National Guard for about eight years after that. And I decided, ah, this wasn't worth it. I got out. <laughs> and glad I did. But by golly, did I learn stuff when I was in the Air Force. Electronics has followed me throughout my life. I've used it all. So, Just, can somebody, uh, so you said Kelly and Paula. Yeah, yeah, Kelly and Paula go to church, yeah. Yeah. So Kelly, what military? Kelly was Army. She was Army, and Paula is, is active, and she's Army. Yep. And then yep. my dad was Air Force, no wonder he yep. likes his church. <laughs> so there you go. Yep, yep. And I, and I know um, Paula's husband uh, was in the Israeli Army. So. Uh, I don't know. What okay. else? I guess we're good.
All right. We do have a couple patron saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. You know, before we move on. What? Memorial Day has kind of shifted into, why that light is still on. No wonder I can't see anything. Um, can you turn that off for me? Um, who would you like to remember? Go to the light. Go to the light. What about that? So, Daryl, would you start this? And just pass the microphone around. Oh, Daryl, Phil can do it. Uh, pass the microphone around. Who would you remember today? Somebody you know that was in the service that's gone, um, or just a family member. Who would you like to remember? Put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. well, that, that'll... You pass the microphone then if you don't have mm -hmm. it. I, yeah, you talk I, to me. I, I have so many. I, I, you, know, you, can, you can choose, I guess. Gotcha. I would like to remember my sissy because I miss her every day. Um, I would like to remember my mom because I miss her every day. I was lucky to not live through much military activity, but my dad served and my two brothers. Oh, cool. I'd like to remember both my brothers. They were in the army. Many. <laughs> many. many. Zero. Well, but Roy was in the Navy. Roy was in the Navy. My dad in the Army. My two brothers in the Navy. My brothers are still here. We can remember their yep. service. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. What do I say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was messaging Paula because I did okay. not know he was just real. Um, Who would you remember in this? Oh, oh definitely my dad. Um, he was in World War II Korea. So he, when he married my mom, she was kind of younger. Okay, so that's why. And um, yeah. He, you got to keep it short. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I can't keep it short because he, he was very mysterious. He didn't talk about everything but i definitely feel he's up and has been a, a massive guiding force through this time he's been speaking and now it's like certain things he's kind of revealing but i know this is a challenging time so um yeah no he's, he's up so yes yeah, so pass gonna it on go. passing it on yeah. thank, thank you, you. <laughs> well, i could talk all day yeah not explicitly military related but i really feel it on my heart to remember all the first responders <laughs> who selflessly ran into the towers on 9 11. Yes, they here. gave themselves for their brothers and sisters and strangers. Yep. Um, it's yep. powerful. Amen to that. <laughs> Who would you remember, Brock? Um, my grandpa on my mom's side, I believe, served in the Army during the Korean War. Uh, he passed a couple years ago. My dad uh, served in the Navy uh, in Vietnam. And my brother uh, served in the Marines during uh, Iraq and Korea. Thank you. My dad's in the Navy. My three of my brothers were in the Navy. Fourth brother in the Army, and my husband in the Coast Guard. Wow. A lot of water there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> My uncle was in the army, my cousin was in the army, my other uncle was in the army, and my best friend was in the army and switched to the Air Force. That's smart. So we're just remembering someone. Who would you like to remember? Military. Or, in, or anything else. Memorial. Or anything else. Yeah. My mother, uh, during the war in Camp Traver, she got there every day. Shorten it up. Every day. <laughs> Thank you. Brother, who was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. Thank you. No, oh, you're fine. We can figure it out. We do. We do. My dad in World War II, and I read his Bible that he carried during the war. Oh, wow. I don't like that case. I think it's okay. My grandfather, who served in World War One, and I have a uh, had a great aunt of whom I'm named for, my aunt Nancy, who uh, was in the the waves in Hawaii right after Pearl Harbor. She was there. And she became the highest ranking 
woman officer at the time. And then uh, my dad and my uncle were both in World War II. And uh, my brother is, was in the Navy just after the Vietnam War. I have a brother that served for um, Army of the Korean. I like to my dad. He was in the Army during World War II and served in the Pacific. And my brother was in the Army and he served in Vietnam. I have military back to the Civil War. Whoa! So, um, all branches of the service. And I, I really, Vietnam was something else. And so I want to honor all those. That was because we were, we were young kids, all young kids, or plus or minus at that High time. High school. Uh, my dad, grandfather, and great-grandfather were all in the Army. My great-grandfather and grandfather were in World War I, grandfather and dad in two. And dad was actually at Normandy. Wow. And uh, my brothers were Coast Guards. And I still have a gold button off of my great-grandfather's uniform. <laughs> nice. This is my dad, John Holmes. He was in the Navy, he flew, and when he came back, he had been married before, or his two sisters, and one was two or three, and the other was four in Wichita, and there's a picture in the local paper of him walking his two daughters, he had not been, been away from when he was over in Japan. So, and then the tradition, my brother also was in the Navy on the Midway. stepmother and my brother both were in the Navy and the Army. My fathers were both in the Army and a dear friend who served people having nothing to do with military, who I dearly miss. Thank you. I'd like to honor my dad who was in World War II in the Navy. <clears throat> our dad was in World War II in the Navy and in the Korean War. <coughs> and I had family members either through blood or marriage and never divorced since the Spanish American War. Um, but I'd also like to remember those who came home and brought the war home with them and were not able to live in this world with them. Yep. Yeah. Where's help? Um, my grandfather was in the army and then my uncle was in the uh, National Guard as well. Thank you. Uh, a lot of my family has been in the Army and uh, Marine. Thank you. I forgot my dad. I was real proud, always proud of him. He's a World War II uh, enlisted. But he got a field commission, so he never told me how he did that. And then he got another promotion still as an officer during the war, so bad stuff must have happened for that to happen. But anyway. I just want to say that when my dad was in the, uh, he was in the Army in Europe, and uh, he fought in the Battle of the Bulge, but he was also part of the liberation of some of the cities, the concentration camps. Oh, awesome. Uh, Something that we never talked about. Yeah, I'm sure. More as hell. More as hell. Yes. Well, cool. That was fun. Never done that before. No, I don't know. Hmm. Just out of the book. Yeah. There we go. A couple favorite scenes by the name of George Carlin and John Lennon. Yeah. I'm going to kind of zoom through some of this stuff. And George, John said, all we are saying is give peace a chance. May it be so. And George, uh, if it's true that our species is alone in the universe, then I'd have to say that the universe aimed rather low and settled for very little. <laughs> so, 
uh, every morning is the dawn of a new era. Oh. <laughs> now, this is from actually from about 10 years ago. So John, uh, Jay Leno said this. Um, with hurricanes and tornadoes, fire out of control, mudslides, flooding, severe thunderstorms tearing up the country from one end to another, and with the threat of bird flu and terrorist attacks, are we sure this is a great time to uh, take God out of the Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah. All right. And of course, what are we going to do with our fruitcake today? Honey, you are a fruitcake. I am. Donate your fruitcake to an urban restoration project. It's an invaluable building material and is good for um, foundation work. Of course. Uh, on average, in any given hour, there are 61,000 people airborne over the United States. And this book is a few years old. Lots of people up in the air all the time. More ways than More one. Ways than one. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Uh, the tragedy of life is not so much what men suffer, but rather what they miss. And well begun is half done. Aristotle, 384 BC. You said that first one. Somebody I didn't know. Yeah, but what did they do? It was uh, Thomas Carlyle, 1795. Wow. Read that one again, please. The tragedy of life is not so much what men suffer but rather with a miss. <coughs> and I agree with that. And sometimes suffering causes us to miss stuff. Yes, it does. It does indeed. Weep not. Friendship uh, multiplies joys and divides griefs. Mm -hmm. How beautiful a day can be when kindness touches it. True. Oh, better uh, than the minting of a gold-crowned king is the safe-kept memory of a lovely thing. Oh. And in many things it is not well to say, know thyself. It is better to say, know others. Just know. Know stuff. Just know stuff. Just know stuff. Be a seeker all the time. Be a seeker. Uh, what does a panda fry his bamboo in? A panda. <laughs> What did the frog order at McDonald's? Files in a Diet Croak. Flies in a Diet Croak. <laughs> Were they French flies? French flies, yes. French flies. He should have ordered a McRibbit. A McRibbit! Yeah. Oh, that was a good yeah, one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Star. Dad, sorry, son, but I only know how to make two dishes meatloaf and apple pie. Son, which one is this? <laughs> <laughs> Not going over there for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Next Sunday. Yeah, that's that's the day after Saturday. <laughs> you are just Sunday. Um, Y'all pray for me, right? Uh, next Sunday, we're going to have an ice cream social after Ooh. services. Yay! And then on the 17th, a Saturday from 10 to noon, we're going to do an angel walk. If you don't know what that's about, uh, it's on the calendar in the back. Back of the calendar. An ice cream social. Now that ages us yeah. somewhat. I don't know when that was started or whatever, but it still means the same thing today as it did 100 years ago. And you'll probably have a Hope Floats. Yeah. I like that. We did Hope Floats many, 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 many years many ago. Many years ago. Haven't done it a second time. Yeah. But it was a great idea then. <laughs> What is it? Just Thanks. root beer and ice cream, but we talked about hope. How hope floats. The hope float. <laughs> Silly us. Yeah. Are you done? I am done. I'm done with I you. Need, need to fill up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Would you please turn the center light off on your way out? Yep. Thank you. Thanks. That was just a little bright. Let's do a prayer. This one's called A Prayer for Clearer Connection. Join me in prayer, please. Draw near to me, loving spirit. Bring understanding to my mind, wisdom to my heart, and sensitivity to my soul. 
Help me to perceive our connection. Help me to recognize the signs you bring. Help me to be mindful of you. Clear the rubble of doubt and fear from my awareness. Grant me a clearer, deeper connection with you. In the name of Jesus, the Ascended One, amen. amen. And our gratitude that goes with that, I am grateful for the connection I share with spirit. I am grateful for this restored connection and awakened awareness. And so it is. And, so it is. and I forgot, I'm, not, I'm unarmed up here. I forgot my Bible. Hold on. I'm hooked. You know, you just gotta laugh. What the heck? Okay. <laughs> now I can keep from falling off my chair. So I want to chat with you a little bit today about um, well, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Uh, you know, we've been talking a little bit about manifesting over the last month. And there's a few cards left that I wanted to give you some tips about manifesting. But I also wanted to chat with you a little bit about sometimes uh, we experience loss. And Memorial Day is a great time to remember that, that we have losses. But sometimes those losses just creep up on us. Um, I remember feeling really terrible. Just had a really bad day, felt sad and melancholy. I was like, what the heck? I realized it was the anniversary of my mother's passing. So, you know, those things creep up, and they, they affect us. Our body knows stuff that's going on. Our body remembers. And, you know, that memory, those losses can be, can be somebody passing away. It could be the loss of a dream. It could be the loss of a friendship. And maybe that person didn't pass away, but maybe they just moved on in their life. It could be a loss of... Um, status. Maybe we had to move and we didn't want to, or maybe we, you know, whatever. There's all kinds of loss in this world. The body remembers. And it's really important for us to be really gentle with ourselves. It's so easy to push, 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 and, and disregard whatever our body is telling us. But it's really important to just take those moments as sacred, whether you know what they're attached to or not. So if you're having a bad day, give yourself a break. Treat it as a sacred reminder to be in this moment and to be at peace. Does that make sense? Those losses take a toll. They do. And we have, you know, life happens. And a big part of life is letting go, moving on, taking the next step. But it can be a real challenge. So when you find yourself melancholy or out of sorts and you don't know why, rather than beating yourself up, let's just be really gentle with ourselves. Just be gentle with ourselves. And know that whatever's going on has deep spiritual significance for us. And when we can be in that space and honor it, like honoring a memory of a loved one, uh, peace then comes to us. Peace happens. And I think that's one of the things that uh, one of the things that people wanted, actually several people uh, said they wanted peace. Peace in their life and peace in the world. Let's see if I can find it. Da, 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 da. I want to manifest peace and calm in my life. And another one, I, want, I hope to manifest peace. So let me talk to you just briefly about manifesting peace starts here. The biggest killer of peace lives right here. Does it not? And I think we need to be really gentle with the part of ourselves that isn't in harmony with peace. Because that disharmony tells us there's something for us to take a look at. So what are we taking a look at? The peace comes from a higher source. Anybody, anybody been doing their, uh, I believe in the power of the ascended Jesus, or I believe in the power of the love, living light of love. Anybody been doing that this week? If you have, I tell you, that's powerful stuff. 
Um, Phil and I were here earlier in the week, and they were working on some new uh, filters for the sanctuary, so you don't have to go up and crawl up on the roof and change it anymore, and we change it inside. Um, <clears throat> so we were running late. Phil was needing to get to another appointment, so I took the dog for a walk because I knew he needed to stay here for the uh, workman. And as I was walking, I started doing this. I remember, or I believe in the power of the ascended Jesus. For me, I do all three. I believe in the power of the ascended Jesus. I believe in the power of the loving God, living God, and I believe in the power of the loving Holy Spirit. I say all three of those. And I was just saying that repeatedly. And I, we walked about, the dog and I walked maybe about 30 feet, and all of a sudden, this huge burden just fell off of me. I have no idea what it was. I didn't know I was burdened about anything. I thought I was just out having a nice walk with my dog. Um, so we burden ourselves with stuff that takes away our peace, and we don't even know it. We don't even know it. But by allowing ourselves to trust, then peace comes to us. Peace is a gift. Peace is a gift. And the more we can be at peace, the more we can generate peace in the world. It starts internally here. It starts internally here. This next person, uh, seek the blessing of life, seek the divine connection, seek the prime source, seek the love through grace. So being a seeker, so this person wants to manifest that seeking attitude. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? Best way to do that is to just do what this person did, write it down and notice it, notice it. And you know when we stop seeking, that's when we get distressed. When we're seeking, we ask, we seek, and we find. Ask first. Ask. Do we ask? No. I'd rather struggle, thank you very much. <laughs> Don't we? Am I the only one that does that? Then, oh, darn it, I could have had a V8. No, I could have asked. And when I ask, then I can seek, and then I'm focused in on what I'm seeking. And then when I'm seeking, I can, it can be revealed to me. I can see the steps revealed to me, and then that comes to me. A happy family that wants to spend time together and have peace and joy for all. Well, good luck with that one. <laughs> Here's the thing with manifesting for other people. That's how it's done. You don't. I can't manifest you being happy. I can't manifest you being at peace. I can't manifest you having the job you love. I can't manifest that. What I can do is love you. And you choose whether you want to be my friend or not. You choose whether you want to spend time with me or not. You have the right to choose. And I get to honor that, whatever that looks like. And I get to choose whether I want to be around a grumpy gut or not. <laughs> gut, G-U-T. I didn't say the other word. I worked really hard not to say that. Other <laughs> Maybe gut was not the best word to use, but it was the only thing I could come up with that rhymed with that one. Um, <clears throat> so manifesting peace within oneself and manifesting joy within oneself, then you can share that. If people want to be a part of that and want to partake of that, great. If they don't, Move on. Find people that do. Because, you know, sometimes we have family that we really love and cherish and we love to spend time with, like my family. And sometimes family is like funerals on a chalkboard. I may have been born into that family, but, man, I don't have anything in common with those people, right? Anybody else feel that way with some, some of our family members? So we love them when we can. We love them when we can, do our best to be at peace and be joyful, and then there's a the family of choice. There's people we hang out with because we adore them, and they get us. You know, it's wonderful to have somebody get us, and then we can share that peace and love and joy. Uh, the fulfillment uh, and joy of myself and others. Again, find what fulfills you and do it. You know, um, I think we spend a lot of time making everybody else's world okay. 
And how's that work? It's Maybe a little, it's exhausting. And you know what? Are they ever happy? Because no. we can't manifest happy for them. It's their choice. How do you think God feels? God has all this power, all this love, all this joy wants to give us, and we choose out. We don't want happy. We want to be miserable. So let me just wallow until I get tired of wallowing. And then, you know, sometimes it takes me a day or two. Sometimes it takes me a week or two. Sometimes longer than that. But when I get tired of wallowing, I can ask, I can seek, and it's given. I'll find it. Make sense? Manifest health and healing in my body. We talked about that last time, the healing. Uh, here's somebody who wants to manifest babies. Here's the thing with manifesting babies, manifesting children. Um, souls have a choice on the other side whether they want to join us or not. Invite them. Tell them you're going to be the best mom or dad that is possible for you to be. But it's also a good thing, I think. I could be wrong. To let them know you're ready for the lessons they bring. Don't our children bring us the biggest lessons ever? Good news, bad news with that, right? <laughs> but let your children, let the, the children that you would like to manifest in this life, let them know you're ready. Bring it. Bring it. I'll be the best parent I can be, and you've got lessons for me to learn. Bring it. I'm good with that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think we talked about that one. We talked about that one. And then here's somebody who wants to manifest um, a new career. Remember, I've talked to you before about making your three lists. Require, desire, and reject. It's the same thing when you're looking for a relationship. Require, desire, and reject. I absolutely will not be with someone who is connected to somebody else, you know, married or committed to somebody else. I won't, I won't do that. You know, and that could be somebody who's, somebody else has passed on, but they can't get over them. They're not available. So whatever I put on my reject list, then I have to have it's positive. I don't have to, but... It is advisable to have its positive on the require list. Because if it's a reject, it's a big deal. So it would really good, be good to put on your require list. And on the require list, the equal and opposite of that is having someone who can be totally committed to me. Right? So whatever's on your reject list, do the reject list first. What do I absolutely not going to deal with? Whether it's in work or relationship and then the require the positive opposite of that and then your desire list well it'd be nice if that person was blonde hair blue eyed and six two <laughs> or maybe five nine and dances on tables <laughs> go Phil <laughs> He was not on my list. That was no. Mm -mm. But it wasn't on my reject list. And everything else was there. Okay. Oh, does that make sense? And bills paid. Bills paid. That's that abundance thinking. You know, I think abundance thinking is this whole other thing. Whole other thing. Because it's so easy to get entrapped by fear and entrapped by lack. Um, Phil and I have had some really financially difficult times. And there were times I would write the check for the house payment and I go, something's got to happen because come next month there's no money for another house payment. And every time something major would happen. One time what happened? Oh, Phil's car caught on fire. He had a classic car caught on fire. Not that I would wish that on him, 
because uh, he was really devastated about that. Uh, but we lived on the insurance money for months afterwards. I was starting my career, he was starting a career. Neither one of us had a lot of money going, but we had to do what we had to do. We couldn't go get a job because we were focused on building a career. And so something else came up. So focus on, it's all okay. Again, I believe in the power of the loving light of God, or the living light of love, whatever. Focus on that. Focus on whatever that is for you. Because there's things outside of our ability that we can access and we can trigger a manifesting mechanism. Maybe you'll have a million dollar idea. Who knows? But thinking about what we don't have is, is opposite of, of the right manifesting. So I want us to focus on manifesting and, and I want to do a guided meditation for you specifically about manifesting. Um, and then I'll do those later. So Mr. Phil, if you have a, if you could turn the lights down just a smidge. Phil came up with this silly guy. Well, he didn't come up with a guided meditation. I said, I don't know what to do for a guided meditation. This is like Monday. He says, oh, let's do cloud watching. So all week it's like, okay, how, how can I make cloud watching and a meditation? I don't know. Yesterday I came up with four sets of clouds. Had no idea what that meant. This morning, read my little Bible verses and stuff to myself. And, oh, I've got it! And here they are. So nothing like waiting till the last possible second. But I believe in the power of the ascended Jesus. And it came through. So <clears throat> let's start with let's start with just taking a breath. Just take a breath. Be here. Be in this moment. Feel that presence of the living light of love. And as you're feeling that presence, feel safe. Feel safe. Feel blessed. And in this state of being, feeling safe and feeling blessed, allow yourself to take a little walk in your mind's eye. And we're going to walk to the place where we had our little meadow and the little stream. Remember that? Find your way back to this little meadow. It has a stream running through it and a tree and a comfortable place to sit. And remember, it didn't have a stream at first. So we manifested that by noticing a storm in the mountains. And then the water tumbled down and created this beautiful little stream through our little meadow. And now allow yourself to find a comfortable place to watch clouds. Maybe you'd like to lay down on your back and look up at the clouds, or maybe where you're sitting, you'd like to just be, stare out in the beautiful open sky, hear the birds singing, have some chirp therapy in your soul. Maybe there's a warm, gentle breeze. Maybe you can see flowers. Maybe you can smell the flowers blooming. And you're going to notice a little cloud, or notice the clouds. What do you see first? A single fluffy cloud? A bank of white clouds? Or a storm cloud? Which do you see? Or choose one of these. Fluffy white cloud, a bank of white clouds, or storm cloud? Notice 
what you see or choose one and realize that this has spiritual significance for you. Now next you see the clouds shifting and changing and a cloud appears as a mythical creature. What mythical creature shows up for you? Is it a dragon, a unicorn, or maybe a pegasus, either the flying horse or the horse with a, with a horn, or a mermaid? Which do you see, or which would you choose? A dragon, a unicorn or pegasus, or a mermaid? Which do you see, which do you experience? And then as you're just laying there, watching the clouds, they move around, the wind carries them aloft, and a new cloud appears for you. Now which do you see? Do you see an angel in the clouds? Or do you see a rainbow in the clouds? Or do you see a hole in the clouds with light shining through? Which do you see or which would you choose? An angel, rainbow, or the light rays shining through? Whichever you choose or whichever you see is what is right for you today. And now let the clouds rearrange themselves one more time. And this time you get to discern what it is. What do you see? What do you see? Whatever you see or perceive is what is right for you and may have deep spiritual significance for you. And you enjoying this moment feels so lovely. So carry the energy of this delightful moment with you as you come back into this time and space, back into the here and now, fully present in your physical form, awake, alert, Recharge, revitalized. Take a deep breath. Might want to wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. Welcome back. And Mr. Phil, if you would join me up front, we'll do communion, and then I will give you interpretation of your symbolism. So I want to read from you Luke 22, uh, verse 19. And having taken some bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. We're doing communion, and this is to remember Jesus. And here's what I remember. I want to read this one to you. This is Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. And seeing the multitudes, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. You know, we get distressed and downcast. And how does Jesus feel about us? He has compassion for us. So let's remember that sacred, divine compassion as we do our communion. May I help you? Oh, yep, let me help you. Join us in prayer, please. <sighs> Loving Spirit of Light, thank you for helping us remember our loved ones and honoring them. Help us to remember you and honor you. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Amen. You. Join us in prayer again, please. Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it. Help us to drink in the peace and the joy that you offer to us. Help us to remember to ask, help us to remember to seek, and help us to find. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Amen.
Yeah, that's going to be a, a, a real nice addition with adding the filters up here and the one at the back. Um, it's, you know, a sizable amount of money, but it's way cheaper than Roy or me or Daryl or anybody else falling off of two ladders to get up on the roof to uh, change filters. No falling. No falling. That's right. So. No, no. But at your age, you bounce. Thank you so much. Um, old building, but it's all take, it's taken care of as needed. Yep. All money's always there when we need it. So, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So you will probably have um, your own interpretation at the, at the very last, so we'll do that last. The first cloud is the focus for manifesting. So how many people saw the single white fluffy cloud? Okay. Uh, your focus right now is focus on yourself. What would make me happy? What would help me? Uh, a bank of white clouds? Me to get a bank of white clouds? You did? Okay. Um, Focus on the greater good. How can I be of assistance? How can I help? Uh, anyone have a storm cloud? Storm cloud. Okay. The storm cloud is saying, uh, focus on the situation that needs healing. Focus on the situation that's out of, out of whack. And focus on the positive outcome that your energy could bring. That's a big one, is it not? Um, the mystic, myth, myth, <laughs> the <laughs> mythical creature uh, has to do with action to take. How many people got a dragon? No dragons? We got a couple of dragons. Get fired up! <laughs> Find something and get fired up about it. Don't you love it? The unicorn pegasus? Got a few of those. See the blessing of the outcome. See it, see it, know it, feel it. You got it. Uh, the mermaid. Okay. This is immerse yourself fully in the action. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, the third cloud was spirit help. How many saw the angel? Got an angel up here. Uh, you will be guided. Rainbow. Got a rainbow? You will have clear vision. The light rays shining through. Got some light rays. You will be inspired. Don't you love it? And then the fourth cloud. What'd you get? What'd you get? So, um, I didn't get a mythical creature, I would have a peacock. A peacock. Um, Strut your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Shine. And um, my fourth cloud just was like the figure of a woman. The fourth cloud, the like, figure of a woman. Not really definitive features or anything like that. Uh-huh. So the energy, uh, the female energy is nurturing energy. So this is asking you or letting you know that your blessing here, the result, is that as you nurture, you will be nurtured in return. I got a rabbit. A rabbit. Leap of faith, dear. Take a leap of faith. You going to try something new? Yes. Okay. Leap of faith. Okay. That's what it takes. Yeah. I got a wrapped gift with a bow on it. Wrapped gift with a bow. The gift you are. Recognize your value. Recognize your worth. I got a dog. A dog. A dog. 
dogs are so sweet. Well, dogs are all about loyalty. So this is asking you to be loyal to your truth without letting anyone else's opinion uh, cause you wavering. And the blessing is that makes you, what's the word I want? Immovable. Mm -hmm. Loving but immovable, you know? People feel safe when they're around somebody who is strong and loving. Yep, anybody else? In back, here we go. Janice, what I got was at the front end of an old train engine. Mm -hmm. The front end of a train engine. Let me ask. The cow catcher? <laughs> Is that the part, the cow catcher? <laughs> okay, so this is like, just go for it, and people will lead, fall, or get out of your way. Yeah. That makes sense? Yes. Okay. I love it, cow catcher. Thank you for the good catch there. Yes? I, I get a uh, magical wand. A magical wand. So manifesting will be easy. Poof. Make sense? Why was a dog also a bit different, like never-ending story dog that was fine? Oh, they oh, sat on him. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a dry, have you seen it's it's a dry. Dry. I got that too. You got it. Two never-ending story creatures. Um, so this is letting you know that nothing is impossible. The only thing that's impossible is doing things without our own willingness. Mm -hmm. So focus on will, being willing, focus on How did you know? allowing. Yes, go ahead. I had a snake, a very, very large snake. It took up the entire side. A snake. Well, the interesting thing about snakes, I don't personally care for them much, um, but uh, they shed their skin. So this is allows you to let go of what no longer serves you and allows you effortlessly. Have you ever seen them go in there? Effortless, they just kind of go. They can climb trees, they can do all kinds of stuff. So this is effortless movement forward as you let go of what, you no, what no longer serves. Does that make sense to you? Are you starting something new? Oh, not that you know of yet. Yeah. Well, it's a never-ending story, like they're a never-ending story, isn't it? <laughs> okay, what else? Anything else? Anybody else? I didn't get any. I saw Jesus. Oh. <clears throat> so your, your blessing or your result is that you have the presence of Jesus with you. Doesn't get much better. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody have any other questions or comments about their, uh, Alex up here. I got a, uh, a phoenix. A phoenix. Uh, awesome. I wondered who was going to get the phoenix because I saw that, but then I was told to dismiss that <clears throat> for these other choices. So this was the mythical creature, the action. A phoenix, what does the phoenix do? If I remember correctly, it breathes fire. Or? It rises up out of the fire, rises up out of the ashes. So this is saying that whatever came before, you can overcome it. You can rise up and fly and be powerful. That's awesome. Way cool. Anything else? Yeah, I have a comment. Um, the woman. The woman that you saw in your cloud, I feel that that is a um, spirit guide manifesting for you. Yep. Makes sense to me. Love it. Okay. I think that's it for that. Let's do, oops, get the camera back. Let's do a, 
uh, energy circuit for the folks online. <coughs> Put hands together really, 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 really fast. Build up that energy. You're still connected into that divine source, whatever that is for you. Bring that energy into your heart space, from your heart space to your left hand, left hand to your right hand, back to your heart space. This connects a circuit, and that energetic circuit now allows energy to build between your hands. You can almost feel a sphere of light building here. This is divine energy. This is energy of grace, it's energy of joy, it's the energy of peace, it's whatever you need in this moment. So bring that into your heart space, be blessed, and we will see you next time. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Say goodbye. <laughs>